you cool cats and kittens. Welcome to Triple Play. I am here today with Misty and with Natalie. Hi. And the block we've chosen to talk about today is our cat block. Yep. And so you're going to get three ideas of what to do with the cat block. I'm up first, so let's take a look at this quilt behind me. So I actually chose to combine my cat, this is the normal cat that we make, with the attic window. So it looks like cats were sitting in the window and I think I it's, like really it. it's really fun. We cute. have uh, we have patterns for both of these and yeah, the well, original pattern is pins and paws. It's pins and paws and then an attic window quilt that we used with um, with a panel. Right. Mm -hmm. But actually any quilt block you make could actually be sashed in that attic way and I think right. it's just kind of fun to see all the little kitties sitting in their windows. Well, it's perfect. My yep. cats always hang out in the windows. They so. do. They love it. Mm -hmm. They love it. So to make this quilt, you're going to need one layer cake, and we have used Midnight Magic 2 by April Rosenthal for Moda. Your accent fabric is going to be one quarter of a yard. You're also going to need three quarters of a yard of a light solid fabric, and you're going to need three quarters of a yard of a dark solid fabric. You're going to need one and a half yards of black, and that includes your sashing. Your border is a nice big six inch border, and you're going to need one and a quarter yards for that and your backing is four and a quarter yards of fabric vertical seams or two and a quarter yards of a 108 wide. So uh, to make this quilt, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one layer cake square, it's all made with layer cakes, and I'm going to cut this right in half right here just like that. This is going to be the body of my cat and I'm going to cut actually a half an inch off because as we sew this kitty together um, we're going to take a seam in the top part of the block. So out of the top piece you're going to get the face and the ears and so we are going to cut a three by five inch piece for the face and then our ears are going to be little two and a half inch squares so we're just going to cut a two and a half inch strip and then we're going to cut that in half and that will be our little ear blocks. Now, you can see uh, on the coat behind me, we've used some background, and so I have some black up here, and then some of the kitties I put yellow, so it looked like the light was on in the room. To me, this, this whole quilt reminded me like of uh, when you look at like a high rise or something yeah. like that, and you see, and cats are always sitting in the window. So these are the people that are home, <laughs> you know, and yeah, the other lights are dark. Also, we have some cats facing this way and some cats facing this way. And that is just a matter of swapping which side your head is on, and I'll show you how to do that. So first what we're going to do is we are going to take some black also and cut out our pieces. So we need a background piece, a two and a half by five inch piece. This is for the ears. And our ears are going to go, we're going to put a two and a half inch square on either side. And I'm just going to finger press these. And Misty, I'm going to give you this, and if you will just sew uh, right on that line. Yep. That way, and then we'll sew the other way as well. Now I'm going to get the other black pieces ready for my... All right, I'll trim this, and Natalie, you can press it. All right. There we go. Oh, got a long string <laughs> there. Our beginning string of the day, that's what that was. Exactly. There you go. And then we're going to put a, a two and a half on the other side as well. Let me go ahead and press a line on that. You can finger press, you can draw the line. You can also just use your diagonal seam tape, line it up in the corner like that and sew right on the line. Okay. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna trim this one off. And Natalie, you can press that back. Okay. Now, on our cat body right here, we have this nine and a half by five inch rectangle. And whatever side you want your kitty to face, you're going to put um, you're going to put the curve of the back of the cat on one side or the other, and that will determine which which way your cat points. So we're going to put him over here. Okay. And then you can just sew right across on that, and she's going corner to corner, doing the diagonal seam tape. That one. And then on this right here, I'm going to have you sew the ears to the face. Okay. So just this is our this is our three inch uh, by five inch, and we're sewing them right to the ears. Now make sure your ears, you know, our our instinct is to, is it's a flying geese to yeah. go like this, but it won't look like kitty ears if we do that. 
So we're going to put this on here like that. All right. And, and Natalie, if you'll press this guy back. Sure. There we go. All right, so here's, here's our cat body. And then here is our little head right here. Will you press that flat? Yep. Now the other piece you're going to need to make this cat is you're going to need the background and it's a five inch by five inch square and it's going to line right up next to this one right here. But that needs to go flip flopped. We don't have a tail mm -hmm. in the face, but sometimes <laughs> we do with a kitty. So this makes your, your cat block. So Misty, if you'll sew this down right here. Of course. These go together so quick and they're just so fun. I think we all really had a fun time with this yeah. Uh, block. Yeah, I did. It's super fun. I can't wait for you to see the girls because it's just, it's just so fun when you see just, you know, the little changes make a big difference. All right, press that back. When I came out with the pins and paws, everybody was like, are you going to do a dog? And I'm like, oh, well, I haven't found an easy dog yet. <laughs> easy way to do it. All right, so then, oh wait, I better tell you this. So we have put the top of the cat block, making sure our tail is on the opposite side of the head. Which means, if you're going to do one the opposite way, you know, your tail would be over here and you would swap these blocks when you put them together. And so now we're just going to sew this seam right here and that finishes up our block. All right. And I'm going to grab some background pieces over here. There we go. All right. Press that little kitty. So to make any block into an attic window block, what you're going to do is you are going to measure the size of your block. This is nine and a half, and we're going to attach a lighter strip down here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to trim this little edge off right here. Because um, actually when I start sewing mine together, I have one long strip and I just put cat, 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 cat on there and then cut them all apart. So if you will sew this lighter strip on the bottom right there. Yep. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your darker strip for contrast and we are going to put snowball this corner just like this and uh, we'll sew side to side like this. And by doing this, it gives it this corner look right here. You see where it's got this, where it gives that depth of being in a window. Now the lighter your bottom strip is, the more contrast you'll have, the more it will look like uh, it's like really stepping back in the window. So uh, just keep that in mind. So that side length is just the that side length side is, is this whole side measurement, okay. and then we will iron this back and trim this off. So I'm going to, and that, you know, and we tell you that so you can do this with any block. You know, when they have to write patterns, it has to be written to fit the actual block that you have the pattern for. Right. But um, you know, I just love the idea of you know, using this as a setting, and it just makes it so cool. Now, this is a little bit longer, so instead of worrying about cutting it, I'm just going to put it on here like this. And, Misty, I want you to sew from, from this side down like okay. this. Now, you'll notice when I put these together, I didn't actually pin it or make it line up because it's a two and a half inch square on a two and a half inch strip that um, sews next to a two and a half inch strip, it actually should fit in there pretty close. And so um, we're going to take a look at this as soon as Natalie presses it. <laughs> See how I did. See how she did. Well, It's pretty forgiving. You know, that little corner is pretty forgiving because they're all the same. It's a little bit All off. the same size. Yeah, but I, I don't think that's something anybody would I don't think notice, so either. You know. It's really forgiving. Yeah. So I actually, uh, yeah, no, I think that's fine. And actually on this right here, if we had actually scooted that just, just a, a hair, yeah. it would line up exactly. You're right. And so here's one that lines up exactly. But, you know, those are things that, um, those, those kind of things, see, this is a little bit off. I would never, I would never even notice it. It wouldn't bother me in the least. Yeah. So on the yellow ones, it's exactly the same. You're doing your yellow two and a half inch square back here. You're doing your ears on a two and a half by five inch strip, and this is a five inch square on the other side, and we swapped sides. And so let's talk about the setting of this and how we put this together. 
So right next to the cat, so let's go from here. So we have on the side, this side has our sashing on it. Sorry. <laughs> this side has our sashing on it. And so we put a black strip on the right hand side of every block. And then we put a black strip in here. Now these strips are the inch and a half strips. And so what I did was I just took this and um, trimmed off my selvages like this. And then um, just sewed down that side that did not have the attic window frame on it. So it all, they all go down on this side, and it doesn't matter what way they're facing, that you'll sew that strip on the side of them. And then when you start putting them together, they just line up, and it looks like it makes the, it makes kind of the sash line for the next cat, is what it does. It makes like that window frame. And, uh, and I would just, here, we go. slide this under Ooh. and keep going. You okay. can chain piece these all the way down your strip, and it's a quicker way to do it. Flipped oh, up on there. Give enough for one more. There you go. One more right there. Perfect. <laughs> I just have to make one more cat, and I have a cute little pillow. Actually, one. Cat. That's true. Yeah. There we go. All right. Let's trim these off. So if you turn them over, you can see exactly where you want to trim. And I'm just going to trim that. And then we'll trim this and right up here next to it. Chain piecing really does make it so it, fast. It goes so much quicker. And then we got this one right here and this one. And we'll let you press those out. Can't get that little string. <laughs> there you go. All right. So then when you're ready to set your cats, you're gonna, we have five in a row and they will go just like this. And we'll put the next one up here. And do you see how it just blends in? That makes the, sa the window sash. Was there any rhyme or reason to where you put the yellow windows? No. Okay. No, I just thought it would be fun to have a few that had a brighter background. Yeah. And, um, and I like the cats that go different direction, but there really wasn't. I think I have three or four of them on here. One, two, three, four, five of them. Okay. Six, Six. actually. Yeah. And uh, there was, for me, there was no rhyme or reason. Okay. I was just doing it. It was fun. I love that I had this cute Halloween kind of fabric yes. on it. And then we just put a regular six inch border on the outside so and then cute. our backing back here, so little skulls cool. and bones. But we quilted this with a spider web. And I think that's really fun to, to use, especially for, you know, Halloween-esque type quilts. It turned out so good. And we, again, we have five across and five down. And it was just really fun for me. So that's next awesome. is, who's next? Nat. Me. I'll go next. Okay. So Natalie's up next. You're up. All right. So my quilt, I called Calico Cats because it was so colorful. It's so it's cute. So, it so cute. I had charm squares to work with. And so the construction of my block is basically identical to mom's, but um, I used two charm squares to make the five by nine and a half the inch body, yeah. body. Everything else is the same size. To make my quilt, you'll need three packages of five inch print squares, and we've used Dream by Christy Lee of Quiet Play for Riley Blake Designs. You'll need about two yards of background, and this includes your sashing and your inner border. You'll need one and a quarter yards of outer border, and we've used this same fabric for the backing. You'll need four and a half yards with vertical seams or two and a quarter yards of 108. And on this quilt, I used a fun binding um, print and you'll need three quarters of a yard for your binding. So to make the taller cats, we're just gonna I add love the tall two I love extra so charm squares at the, at the bottom. And so that is that block. But because I had charm squares to work with, I also had this little two inch piece left over when I cut the, um, the three by five oh, piece. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is what I made all of these little flying geese pe They're pieces They're so with. cute. They are so darling. It adds so and they much ended to up, quilt. They ended up being, you know, all the same size because they're five inches long, which right? is the same length as the other two. It's perfect. So then so your block so, is, is the same. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. So all these blocks are the same size. I just put the, the flying geese either on top or on bottom. Of the shorter whichever cats, Whichever way I wanted right? to. And you can see here in this top corner, I had some light, really, really light blocks. 
and I thought if I just used a couple of the charm squares to make a darker background that they would stand out. They kind of, they kind of blend a little bit. I could have used a different background color, mm -hmm. but just like um, with any fabric line that you have, sometimes you might have lights or darks yeah, that don't always... blend in and you can just do like an opposite block. Right, so cute. So I true, thought that true. was kind of fun. I love that. All right, so, um, so since mom easily taught like the whole cat block, I'm not <laughs> gonna put a lot of effort into that, but what I would like to show you is this fun flying geese. It's wonky, so you don't have to be super exact, but uh, we use a two inch by five inch square or rectangle. <laughs> So we're going to take our charm square and cut two by five because the three by five piece is, is what you would use for your yeah. face. Right. And so I, I didn't want to have mixed it all up. Yeah. I didn't want to have like leftover pieces. Yeah. I love that they're calico sticks. So, <laughs> yes, so cute. They mm -hmm. are so cute. So this, um, this little flying geese corner is not any specific size. It's just whatever length it needs to be. Okay. <laughs> and you just crossed over the middle. Yep. Okay. Yep. So we'll just do a little finger press at the top and go from Oh, it's like a, go from a wonky down. goose? It's a wonky goose. A wonky goose. I get <laughs> it. So you can and you can kind of see when you look at it, they don't all like end in the same place. They're not necessarily like all centered. I love it though. But um but I think it's fun and creates like a really cool movement. All right. All right, so this one you'll want to go ahead and uh, make sure it covers the corner. Yep. Yeah, so you can just use your ruler and trim that off because we do want that middle to cross so mm -hmm. that you have a little bit of um, a little bit of space so you can keep your point. Yeah, because I like really the fun. Yeah. That's such a fun idea. And then this will just go that direction. Um, I do cut the color out because if you leave it in you can see through it you can yeah. see through the white so I like my I like to trim that piece out just on these particular right. flying geese and I don't so always then, do that if the fabric's dark enough to cover it so then I start like right here on the bottom in the corner uh -huh. and, and I just over. cross over this yep. and do you cross it like a quarter of an inch or yeah pretty much all right it's just eyeball all right there we go, there we go. I'll let you go ahead and press, press this that whole one. thing just so we can yep. get it squared really neatly. You betcha. This is so cute. There we go. Such Thank a grand you. idea to, to use. I love so it when I we can use everything. Yeah. Get this all squared up. Having no waste is pretty awesome. Yeah, it works out really well. One more on this side and then we'll cut out that purple. And again, that piece is two by five. Yep, two oh. by five. So even if, like, if you're squaring and something is, you know, you can always square it to that size. Awesome. All right, there's your little. All right, so <laughs> this is a great line and had tons of great colors. And I just went ahead and lined them up in rainbow colors. Oh, that's because awesome. Because it was I very soothing it. to my soul. All right, so, so. then you just... Add, we're going to add this purple to the bottom. In every single one, there are six pieces. Okay. Six flying geese. It's so magical it's that it just worked out. It's something for the out. kitties to It did. To, it worked out so great. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best. There we go. All right. right. Press, that Press back. it back. And then we can decide. Do you think we should put it on the top or the bottom? It doesn't matter. Oh, this is a, the short kitties get the, the short geese. Kitties yeah. get the flying geese. I was, like, do, I was like, do you want did to Did you do like talking? half one way and half another, or did you just totally it's, mix it up? It's roughly half and half. Okay. Because I, I just. And some on the I top and some like on the that. bottom. It's yeah, but, so cute. But it wasn't, I didn't really plan out, you know, I need to make this many exactly and that yeah. many exactly. The pattern will tell you. You can follow the directions and get a quilt that looks exactly like mine. That's but. actually kind of a fun fact because we generally come up with the pattern and make it, and then the pattern people, the writers, Our have writers. to figure out what we did. They are we'll rock stars. Know, yeah. and so They're so we great. Tell them and they yeah. put it into words and yeah, yeah. makes it really cool. All right, so All right. And make where the do you math work. So, so right, so if this this is your base cat mm -hmm. made the same way that you taught us, except for the bottom is two charm squares. Right. But it, it measures the same, right. five by nine and a half. You actually don't have to trim a half an inch off then. Right, exactly. No, you're no taking trimming the seam. on mine. So if you wanted a tall cat, you just add two more squares. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted um, a cat with flying geese, then you add the flying geese, either top or bottom. What do you guys think? I think we put them on the bottom because 
the cat's ears match that one oh, flying geese, that and that just is <laughs> Lines the way up my brain you. works. All right. It doesn't have there to point go. that way. And but. if you have a little bit of extra, which sometimes we do when we're adding things that have fewer or more seams, mm -hmm. sometimes based on our seam allowance, we may end up with a piece that's like, you know, a little bit more fabric on mm -hmm. one side. Then you can center your center seams because we have six, and so you'll get a, a nice good center. And then put the wider piece on the bottom, mm -hmm. and it'll ease in. Big bottoms to the bottom. Right? <laughs> I always say. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. those feed dogs will pick up just a little bit more fabric. It won't ruffle it. It'll just make it fit it just, just really it. nicely. It's one yeah. of those sewing magic things. It's, it really it's is. A handy hack. Yep. <laughs> Every time I'm like, I don't know why this works, but it does. It totally does. <laughs> and, it, and you just have to watch, you know, your, your middles and your ends, and then everything works out. Yeah. There we go. Oh, so it's there so you go. cute. You want me to press it? Sure. All Do right. a good press. So I had three charm packs, and out of that, I also got these cute little cornerstones. They're just two and a half inch squares, and it's sashed with a two and a half inch wide sashing. Um, and I did that for the inner border as well, so it's really just like the cats are kind of floating in rainbow land. Hanging so out. it's like I five it. by four. One, two, three, four, five by one, two, three, four. Because these blocks are quite a bit longer than they are tall. You don't need as many down. Yeah. And um, so the size it, it comes It measures out. 66 by 73. Great size. I did a, a nice uh, six inch size border and you'll notice that the fabric is directional. It's so so cute. the So I went ahead and cut my fabric so that the top and bottom would line up in a in a directional manner. So yes. all your rainbows are going so the same way. So all my rainbows are going the same way. So if you look at all of the borders, the, the rainbows are all the same. So that. the way that you do that with directional fabric, you'll notice how it's printed. And we normally print with, um, with our selvage edge to the bottom. And that would give me cuts that go this way. And that works great for my top and bottom borders mm -hmm. because then my rainbows are facing the way that I want them to. But if I want to cut border pieces that go the other direction, all I have to do is turn my fabric and cut length of fabric instead of width. So I just did that and cut this direction. I lined up my selvage edge and folded it down and made sure everything was really straight. And then I just cut my borders going this way instead of selvage way. I love so that. I love your, so that's your pretty binding. cool. And my <laughs> binding is also <laughs> directional. Yeah. And I also cut it length of fabric to get it, um, to get the sideways little, little, little rainbow scallops. prints with the scallops. So it's so cute. I love these so little So you hearts. cut it this way then? I also I did, really yeah. love your quilting with the umbrellas. Oh, like, isn't that so great? Cute. I love the umbrella quilting. And so the backing cute. again is this rainbow. It's just such a beautiful, it's beautiful so happy. So happy. It's just it. really happy. And cheerful. I love these rainbow, uh, yeah. the umbrellas too. Yep. So cute. Really cute. Great job, Nat. I love it. So yeah, hope All you right. guys enjoyed that and learned something new. And Missy, now we're on to Missy. My turn. Up. Okay, so this is my quilt. You know I love tiny, so I had to make these little itty bitty kitties. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so we decided I decided to call it itty bitty kitty committee. Because I, I couldn't resist I it. it. <laughs> so um, the quilt is 54 by 65. It comes together really quick. And one thing I wanted to do, um, I started with the charm pack, but I wanted to make sure that my block still finished at five inches so that I could set it with these charm squares. So let me show Perfect. you how I did that. To make my quilt, you're going to need two packages of five inch squares, and I use Tula Pink's True Colors for Free Spirit Fabrics. You'll need one and three quarter yards of background fabric, a quarter yard of accent fabric, one yard for your outer border, and three and a half yards backing with horizontal seams. So the assembly is essentially the same as yours and yours. It's just mm -hmm. smaller. Only the sizes have so, changed. That's right. <laughs> and so we're going to start with our five inch square and I'm going to cut a two and a half by five inch rectangle. And that's going to be the bottom of our cat. And then that was easy. Super easy. <laughs> super and easy. then it's almost done. <laughs> it's almost, almost done. done. Exactly. And so then for the little chin piece, we need a one and a half. Oops, I need to turn this around. One and a half by two and a half. So I'm just gonna cut that off. And that's our chin. 
And then I'm going to trim this down to one and a half. And I'm going to cut two one and a half inch squares. For your ears. For the ears, that's right. So there's one. And one more. And this is our little bit of waste. So Perfect. we won't need that. So there is all of our cutting from our charm pack. And then we're going to pair that with some background fabric. So you can see I've got a one and a half inch background square and we're just sewing that corner to corner. Mm -hmm. One thing I do want to point out, um, and I'll show you when we do the cat ears, but when you're working with these tiny blocks like this, you need to be really careful when you're sewing these corners. Um, and so when I would draw my line or press my line, I use the, the diagonal seam tape. I actually make sure that the points, instead of being right on the center line, I put it just like a needle's width over so that I have a little bit extra fabric to fold over and make sure it ends up square. Oh, okay, perfect. Because you're more likely to end up with uh, not quite enough fabric when you're dealing with these tiny blocks. So let's go ahead and trim this one off. And then that. I do that too. Yeah. Just, just a little bit to the right of the line. Whichever side you're wanting to flip back, you go on the other on side. On the other side, and it gives you just a little bit extra. I throw caution to the wind and just make it work. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I love that we're so different. Exactly. and So, then, so I feel like any little difference you can catch in that quarter inch seam. Yeah. And know, I just so. like my blocks to Perfect. finish up just square. And so then for the ears, we're going to use a two inch by two and a half inch background piece. So we'll just take our one and a half inch print square and go corner to corner here. So okay, so, so not, be, not doing it the way you do it. Yeah. So let's just take a little closer look at this. So my, my corner's right there under my needle. Am I just moving it a hair this, this way? That way, just okay. a smidge. Yeah, yeah so should, see. Do you want to draw a line so you can Yeah, let's see do that it. so people can see. Here, I'll let's grab, grab a pen. pen. Good idea, Nat. Well, I mean, for most of us, we sew on the line, sew on the line, sew on the line. Exactly. And we can sew on the line, but if you're going to move it over just a little just hair. Just a little bit. That makes sense. So let's do I would have never known this. So we'll draw the line. Because the thread, when it's that tiny, the thread will make a little bit of a difference. And when you're folding something back, there's like a, a little, just the tiniest, tiniest little bit, bit of space. Well, and then even if, even if it folds over a little extra, you can you square, can square that it. Off. Yes, okay. exactly. So that makes square sense. It if you're All right. A little bit to I learned right. something new today. I love that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so see, now I'm just going to put my needle right on this side of the on line. On the outside yep. edge. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so let's line this up here, and we're just going to sew right here. Just right on and the other side of it. Also, when you're sewing little pieces, I just want to mention that um, it will help them stay in because they're, it's such a shorter line mm -hmm. if you just shorten your stitch length a just little a little bit. bit. That's a good tip, too. Yeah, and go slow. Yep, take your time. Did you guys see how slow I went? <laughs> I'm so proud of you. So <laughs> proud. <laughs> right. All right, so we'll trim that off, and Nat, if and you will press, press back. that back. Sure. And sh maybe we should show that one more time. With do you want to show, oh, I was going to say, do you want to see this one? Because you can actually see. If oh, you, good idea. If you zoom in really closely, you can see that we're just a tiny bit yeah. to the right of that line. And so our stitches are just <clears throat> about a needle's width on the other side yeah, of where we are. Super, marked. super close. Yeah, that's a great, great call. Whew. Thanks, Nat. Pass the test. We yeah. did. <laughs> it looks great. And oh, so then. And I can't get it out. There we when go. When we roll it back. And then you, it's perfect. You can see how great that turns out. Yeah. yeah. Just really nice. And so then we'll do the same idea here. Do you want me to mark it again? Of course. Okay. Make it a little bit easier. Yeah. Oops. You can still eyeball this. It's right. not a big deal. Yeah, but I just really knowing, isn't a big deal. Just knowing that you move it just a tiny bit. That's yeah. super helpful. It helps I a lot to keep things square. I didn't mark ever because I no. used that diagonal seam tape, but it, if, it yeah. will help you visually to figure out where you are trying well, to go. The thing about when, you, when you're learning a new skill is that it helps to do it like the actual correct way a few times <laughs> yes. because then mm -hmm. you're, you're used to eyeballing it well, just a hair muscle over. muscle memory. And, yep, exactly. Yeah, and the muscle memory, yeah. So there That'll we go. That'll come into play once you've done it a few hundred times. And so we've already got this bottom squared. Uh, I love they're so tiny. They're so they're cute. They're so cute. And your little ears. And so there's our ears, and we can just put that right with our little chin piece okay. and sew those together. I think it's funny that you call it a chin. I call it the face. I call it the face, but too. She's, you've called it the chin this whole time. Yeah. Like, even in our design process, yeah. you're always like, the chin, the chin. I don't know why. That's just in my in my head, I guess. There's the chin on the cat. It's, it's real. <laughs> yeah. It is also a face. You're not wrong. It's a face. <laughs> All right, there it's we go. All the things. Okay, this so we'll funny. press that. 
And then now we're going to add our little ear, our little face piece to a three inch background square. Cool. Oops. And by cutting the, ba the backgrounds a larger size, it keeps your square at five. Exactly. Yep. So okay, you just perfect. end up with a little extra um, white up here on top of the ears, but then our I think it looks great. I think so it's too. So cute. And our block is gonna end up exactly five. Now you made all your cats facing the same direction. I did, yeah. You? I decided to just put them all one way. And for a moment I thought about switching it, but I had gotten so far in the yeah. process, I was like, nope, I'm just gonna have them all hang out the same direction. Well that's what's fun. They're I love yeah. so different. much that they're five inches because that just opens up a ton right. of new and you honest, an idea of possibilities. Exactly. And you could do the same thing with a 10-inch square, too, and set it with that and uh -huh. just change your background pieces to, to have it work. Yep. So then we'll just press that. It's true. We get in a way of thinking, and it's fun when, when yeah, you know, it, you we can think a little different. Yeah. Yeah, because when I first made it, they finished um, four and a half. But mm -hmm. I was like, well, I don't want to cut down all of my right, right. all of my charm squares. So there we go. There's our finished five-inch uh Kitty, kitty block, itty bitty kitty. itty bitty kitty block. And you can see, I kind of used the beautiful gradient in this quilt. I love it. And I just started with my cats and I have eight across alternating between a cat block and a print block. And I just sashed with a one and a half inch strip in between. But I want to take a minute and talk just a little bit about seam allowance and measurements when you're working with small blocks, mm -hmm. because I think one of the things that drives people a little crazy when they're dealing with tiny piecing <laughs> is when they're like, I've, I've used all these things and they're just not lining up. And when you're working with smaller blocks, um, variation in your measurement adds up much faster. It really does. Yep. It really does. And so one thing I notice is these particular pre-cuts, for some reason, even though they're supposed to be five, they actually end up, they're like five and an eighth. And so for our cat, it's not a huge deal because we're cutting it down. We're cutting our pieces down. But when I'm mm -hmm. setting it with my charm square, I noticed I kind of had to float it a little bit and I had to do the trick where you put the wider side down to get it to, yeah. to ease in because that even that little eighth of an inch well, and, adds up. And on most of them, they have that pinked edge. And right. so there's already that little bit of play in there. Exactly. And so just measure, measure your squares and then decide where you're going to cut them from. Exactly. And so I, I brought this little piece that's from a, uh, honey, a bun. honey bun. And yeah. I want to show you it's kind of the same thing. So we have our pinked edges. And it's, again, you've got about an eighth inch mm -hmm. of extra play. And they measure from the inside which, of the piece. Right. I know, but in my brain, I, if, yeah, I so have to, trying, right. as you're yeah. trying to line it up, if you have these pre or these cut from fabric, they're going to be mm -hmm. one and a half square exactly. Exactly. And then it's not going to line up with a one and Absolutely. five eighths square. Yeah. So for that reason, I opted to cut my strips and use yardage because I found for my background pieces, I didn't have... I was working much harder trying to get everything mm -hmm. to, to, make it match. to make it match by using the pre-cut in this instance. And so yeah. that, I just, that is a brain thing though, because yeah. my brain does not recognize those pinks as I fabric. Know. And so it immediately, I, I cut them off in my head. Yeah. And so just watch what your brain does because, you know, and that be aware way of it. Yeah. Well, if you're, and it, it might be worth your time to just take these pieces and just trim and off just that trim little them. eighth inch extra. Well, exactly. And to Misty's point, if you're going to trim all of these strips, you may as well just cut them out and the yardage. Exactly. exactly. If you're, so if you're cutting, if you're going to match uh, honey bun strips with these squares. Yeah. Maybe instead of one and a half, these are one and five eighths. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You could just change the cut that you. So that that would be make. less cutting than trimming your whole honey bun down to match right. the other squares. Exactly. I would just use yardage. You if have I was to cut trim. your yardage anyways. Exactly. And so hopefully that wasn't too much, but I just think it is important to point out because when you're dealing with smaller blocks, it's a very common issue. Mm -hmm. And so just check all those measurements because that could be where it's going wrong. Right. And the other so, thing is a super uh, consistent seam allowance. It's true. Yeah. Just so go you, slow, take yeah. your time, try and, to keep yeah. it the same. Yep, exactly. And then everything will match up better. And so, yeah, we just have the inch and a half strips in between every block. And then I want to show you a trick for the sashing row. I actually make a strip <laughs> set. Oh, so, that's so smart. So then I have my five inch background strip and then an inch and a half um, accent strip. And then we're just going to cut this into inch and a half That's so strips. great because then you that don't ever so have to work smart. with that teeny tiny little oh square. Exactly. You're That's never, so smart. Brilliant. Never going to match that up with anything. So Wait, you want to cut your salvage off, don't you? Oh, I, that's what I am. Oh, just taking a I'm big just cut. I'm just taking a big cut. Okay. Sorry. I don't care. It's all good. All right. Don't so, care. There we go. 
And so you can see, I would just cut a bunch of those. I have a few more already cut. And then we can just sew those together. And I actually started with a solid and then I used all of my um, strip sets to go from there. And so I just so took smart. it all the way That's to the end. That's really smart. And so then that went I really, really quick. It's a great sashing great hack sashing to make hack. it go yeah, faster is, for you. Yeah, that is a great hack. Yeah, and so then I just carried that uh, sashing into the inner border. That's just an inch and a half. We have a nice five inch border and I love this print. Yeah. And then we have this fun backing. So. Now, what is this? Cool. Oh, this is quilted with cotton candy. Cotton candy. That's yep. a really Just cute pattern, candy. too. So it was a really fun quilt to make, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, it's great. So we hope you enjoyed this triple play on all our cool cats and kittens <laughs> from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you are not already part of the Missouri Star Quilt family, you can hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.